This is a Gravis Destroyer joystick from 1998. Today, I'm going to be using it in combination with my Pentium 2 machine and try out Microsoft Flight Simulator 98. As the name implies, Microsoft Flight Simulator is basically a simulation for flight. Anyone could be a pilot in their own home. The only requirement was that you had a joystick. Thankfully, Windows 98 had great support for automatic joystick configuration. You see, it was really quite simple. Once you'd plugged in your joystick to the DB15 connector on your sound card, you were ready to go pretty much. You didn't really even need to install your joystick drivers unless it had a lot of proprietary buttons or something. All that was really needed to be done was navigate to the control panel. There, there was actually a specific button for game controllers. These days, everyone just uses keyboard and mouse on PC. But back then, game controllers were a much bigger deal. So, you could simply pick from the configuration list whether you had a 2-axis 2-button joystick, 2-axis 4-button joystick, and a bunch of other choices. But you basically just got to scroll through and see if you can find either the specifications of your joystick or your exact model. In this case, all we need to do is pick the Gravis Analog Joystick Profile. This is close enough to what our joystick is, and it'll work perfect. So, all we need to do is click properties and we can test out our joystick. So you can see here I'm moving the joystick around but it doesn't look very good so that's why we need to calibrate it. To calibrate a joystick firstly you just leave it centered and then you just press a button on the controller. Then you got to run it in circles basically. So you're moving your joystick round in circles several times to make sure it can calculate the range that it has. Once you've done that a few times, now it's time to leave it centered so it can figure out the center point. Bear in mind, you can do this whole calibration without even touching your mouse. So I would call that pretty cool. Now that we've got our joystick set up, we can put Flight Simulator in our computer and install it. So when you get to this menu, you have a couple of options. You can run demos and set up other games, reinstall DirectX, visit their web page, or set up Microsoft Flight Simulator 98. First, you're prompted to enter your name, and then the installation starts. You're also greeted to some lovely plane sounds when the installation starts, shown here. Very realistic. Well, I don't know how realistic I'd call it by today's standards, but I suppose for the time it was really good. Just look at all these plane models that are here. They look pretty cool if you ask me. I mean, they're not that realistic, but the thing that is realistic about Flight Simulator 98 is definitely the flight deck stuff. I have no clue what any of this hardly means. I'm sure if I read the manual, I could probably figure it out. But yeah, let's go for a fly. So, apparently, you press F3, and that's the accelerator. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yep, seems good. But there's a bunch of other stuff you gotta do as well. So you can see I was trying to take lift off here very soon, but I underestimated how long it would take for me to be able to take proper lift off. After a while, I kind of stopped trying. But then lo and behold, I finally took lift off. What an amazing feeling. 
Oh, but then I came crashing back to Earth. But there we go. Now I'm finally in the sky. You know, it may not look the part, but it sure feels pretty realistic. I mean, I've never flown in a plane or controlled one, but it's definitely a lot better than just using keyboard and mouse, I must say. Because, I mean, you're controlling it, you know? It's kind of like what it is in a plane. So, it's pretty good. Oh, it's hard to control though, if you don't know what you're doing. Oh, that is a crash. That's gonna happen a lot when you first play this simulator, but you'll get better over time. Even back in the 90s, pilots still used this primitive technology just to have a muck around and train for their flights. But it's definitely come a long way and is now actually a standard for when a pilot is in training. I mean, they don't use Flight Simulator 98, don't get me wrong, but they do use a flight simulator. They don't just stick you in a plane and expect you to fly. So you can see here, I'm doing pretty all right actually. This joystick isn't force feedback or anything. It's actually quite a low end one, but still, I mean, it's a Gravis one. It's pretty good, you know, it gets the job done because you can control the plane pretty well. But yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun with this game actually. It was pretty good. You get to control the plane, fly around, don't crash. But one thing I noticed is that everything's flat. I mean, back in the day, the video cards, they weren't as powerful as they are today. So you really couldn't render out a whole city. But I mean, it would have been nice if they'd just done some stuff so it looks like it's 3D just from your perspective. If they made an image that just looked 3D instead of plain 2D. The whole world looks very flat in this scenario, so it doesn't get very many points from me because it's kind of boring. But I mean, if you really just want the real experience of what it's like to fly a plane, I suppose this is close enough. Or you could just get a much newer flight simulator. Or hell, you could even become a pilot if you really love it that much. But it is pretty fun either way. And if you happen to see it, I would recommend picking up Flight Simulator 98. It's a good bit of fun, yeah. There's plenty of joysticks from the 90s, which are really fancy. And honestly, your experience would probably be a lot better using one of those, because they'd have so many more controls and you wouldn't have to use the keyboard to do tasks, which normally would work better with analog rather than just a digital key press. But yeah, that's about all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.